Hi, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a simulation in Cordis. What is a simulation? Well, a simulation is just you verifying that your circuit works before you build it. As in, you give it some sample inputs and see that the outputs are nice and dandy. Now normally, you make your simulation before you put the circuit onto your breadboard, your FPGA, whatever. In the previous tutorial, we didn't do that. But going forward, what you're going to want to do is right after you finish designing your circuit to a bare minimum, simulate it. Then add some more stuff to it and simulate it again. Once you're finally done with your design, simulate it one final time and then put it onto your FPGA. That way you can make sure that there's no bugs in your program, that everything works just how it should, and that everything will go just fine when you program it onto the breadboard. So let's get started. Now, here is where we left off on our previous tutorial. There's a slight error. Here, the entity name should really be tutorial because the name of our file was tutorial.vhd, so that means the entity name has to be the same as well. Go ahead and make those changes. Do a fast compile because there are simulations. All you have to do is run a fast compile. Pretty good. While this is running, we can go ahead and run a new simulation file. So click on File, New, and then scroll down to the Verification and Debugging Files. Click on University Program VWF, and we can see compilation was successful. Click OK. Now we have an empty slate. First things first, I'm going to change our grid size. To, so go to Edit, do Grid Size, and I like 25 nanoseconds. Click OK. Now I'm going to go ahead and set the end time to be 1.2 microseconds. Now the reason why you would do this is if you have a longer simulation, you can let it go on for longer. Pretty simple. Now I'm going to go ahead and save it. So click File, Save As. Now it's going to put you into a weird directory. You don't want to be there. What you want to do is go up one directory to your root directory. This is where the DB, Output Files, and Simulation folder is. Go ahead. Save it as the default name, and you'll be good. Oh, no. Got to make sure you click in the empty area, and then click Save. So, now that we have it saved, we can go ahead and we can add our inputs and outputs. Double click on the left area here, click on Node Finder, click List, click on the two double right arrows, click OK, and click OK again. Now we can see we've got A, B, and C. Two inputs, one output. So. Let's learn how do we manipulate these. Well, all you gotta do is just drag with your mouse with the left mouse button, then click one. Or you can do multiple and click one. You can do tons of them, click one. And you can even set this tiny little one to be zero. Pretty easy. You can go backwards if you go down, but you can't go backwards if you go up. So we just gotta get used to that. Next, if you click on A, Click on this C button here, change this to 25 nanoseconds. You can see that now we have it counting from 0 to 1 to 0 to 1 to 0 to 1, just like a clock signal. That's because what the C does here is it actually is counting. So if you have more bits, it'll count up to 0 to 1, 2, 3, and so on. Here, if we start at 1, you can see it inverts it, so now it goes 1 to 0 to 1 to 0. Let's go ahead and let's make a super easy simulation by grouping these together, by holding down shift and clicking on both of them. Right click, click on grouping and click group. Give it a meaningful name like inputs. Now we can see that A and B are grouped together. So if we click on inputs now and click on the count, keep it at 25 nanoseconds, you can see it's doing the counting. But it's starting at a weird number, it's starting at two, and then it's going to 3 and back to 0. Let's start it at 0. That makes more sense. There we go. So now we start at 0, go to 1, 2, 3, and back to 0. Now you can change the radix of here. Right click, click radix, click unsigned decimal, and here you can see it's now representing it instead of binary, it's in base 10. 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. But I'm going to keep it in binary. Now we're ready to simulate. So click on this first play button here, 
run fun functional sim simulation. Go ahead and save it, and we're going to get an error. Why do we get an error? Well, that's because Cordis is honestly really dumb. All you got to do is click on simulation, simulation settings, click restore defaults. You have to do this if you ever save it in a different directory or with a different name. Fix it. You only have to do that once. Now, click on this again, save it, and it will run perfectly this time. Go ahead and, oh, that's weird, look at that. So remember from the previous project, it was supposed to be an XOR gate, but here we can see it's not really functioning like an XOR gate. XOR is not true when A and B are zero. Here, it says it's true. XOR is true when it's one zero, but here it says it's false. That means that something's wrong. So let's go and look at how to fix it. So all you gotta do is click on the X here, minimize this, and ah, here we can see, here's the error. We got an extra not here. Because look at the comment, helpful comment. It says that C is supposed to be not AB. Well, here we got not A and B, and then A, not B. Here we have not A, not B. Well, all we gotta do is remove that not, save it, and then do a fast compile. Whenever you want to run a simulation, you don't have to do a full compile. All you gotta do is just do a fast compile because all it has to do is figure out the equations. Fast compiling is just figuring out the equations. The other kind of compiles are for getting it onto that chip. So it's done. Now we can go ahead, open our previous simulation window, or if you lose it, you can click on files here and double click on this waveform. Now, just gotta run it again. Takes about five seconds or so. Ah, now you can see we fixed it. Here, we've got C is true only when A and B are different. That's the expected thing, because remember, this was an XOR gate. Now, if you change the inputs to have more inputs or more outputs, well, you got to do another fast compile. Let's say we make a D. Let's say that D is going to be equal to, uh, what's a good one? You know what? I kind of like NANDs myself. So I'm going to do not A and B. And so this is going to be D is a NAND B. Perfect. So let's run that fast compile again. And while that's happening, I close out that waveform. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open that back up. There we go. Let's wait for this to finish. Do, do, do. There it is. So now all you got to do is open up that waveform. Then double click here. Click on Node Finder, List. Bring them all back over again. Click OK. Click OK. And ah, oh, look at that. We got D now. So because there's two outputs, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to make this a grouping. I'm going to name this outputs. There we go. Now I'm going to save this, click run, and it should only take about five seconds or so. And now we can see we've got a NAND gate in D. So we've got 110, 110. That's ex exactly what we expect. As you can see here, 00 is 1, 01 is 1, 10 is 1, 11 is 0. Now, do keep in mind that Cordis assumes everything is active high, so it doesn't know that active low signals exist. So if voltage is high, it just shows it as a 1. So here, what this really is, this is voltage level, but it always interprets it as active high. So keep that in mind in future circuits, but for now, it doesn't make much of a difference. Anyways, that's been this tutorial on how to make a simulation in Cordis. Hope you guys have a great day. See you in the next video.